trying to understand and to reflect and to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is nothing more virtue more uh, pleasurable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than to be busy with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is more valuable in our life than to recite and to reflect and to understand and to act according to the book of Allah we are still in surah al-an'am this beautiful surah the surah that the subject of it is at-tawheed the entire Quran is about the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Surah Al-An'am talks about this in so much details so that nobody would really have an excuse. Once a person reads the Qur'an and again, the Qur'an is the final revelation from Allah, is the living miracle till the Day of Judgment. From the time of the Prophet ﷺ, no need for any more prophets to come. We have the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the miraculous thing for the entire world from one generation to the other to see for their own selves the clear evidences and the clear proofs of how this is the truth and this is the purpose of one's life and this is the message of all the messengers of Allah to embrace it, to act upon it and to be patient in applying the orders of it. One of the things that the surah also exposes are the injustices of the false religions, the altered ones. Anything that goes away, deviates away from the truth, you would find all kinds of injustices in it would find all kinds of contradictions in it. And that's the first level of corruption in anything that a human being would do, and that is contradictions. There's no contradictions in the deen of Islam. There's no contradiction in the book of Allah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the matter very clearly, the ways of the people of Jahiliya, the, the ways of the people of ignorance. And the same is for those who are upon false religion. And the religion of the truth is the religion of Islam. And other than the deen of Islam is all false. In the deen عند الله Islam. The deen, the religion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Islam. The religion of all of the messengers of Allah. The only religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from the people in the day of resurrection is the deen of Islam. So in these verses inshallah ta'ala that we will discuss in Surah Al-An'am from verse number 138 to 142. 138 to 142, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of these verses talks about the injustices of uh, the false religions, the people of Jahiliyyah and so on. Uh, and uh, whoever wants to see how ignorant people were and how, e how ignorant people can be when they deviate away from the truth, these are good examples for people to reflect upon. So verses 138 to 142, we start inshallah with verse number 138. In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا هَذِهِ أَنْعَامٌ وَحَرْثٌ حِجْرٌ لَا يَطْعَمُهَا إِلَّا مَنْ نَشَاءُ بِزَعْمِهِمْ وَأَنْعَامٌ حُرِّمَتْ ظُهُورُهَا وَأَنْعَامٌ لَا يَذْكُرُونَ اسْمَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهَا افْتِرَاءً عَلَيْهِ سَيَجِزِيهِمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ Which means, and they say, these animals and crops are forbidden, no one may eat from it, uh, from them except whom we will by their claim by their claim and there are those camels whose backs are forbidden by them and those upon which the name of Allah is not mentioned all of this an invention of untruth about him he will punish them for what they were inventing so uh, this is an example where the people of Al-Jahiliya before the, t the time of the Prophet والسلام, this is where they invented of what's permissible and what's not permissible in any religion, you would find there are permissible things and non-permissible things. The one that has the right for things to be permissible or not permissible is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people would invent their own limits and their own permissible things and halal and haram and so on. And usually it's a way for manipulating the masses. Those who are in charge, the religious leaders and the like of that, they would manipulate the masses. They would make things for their own selves or for those who have the power or things of that nature. So they would make for them what's permissible and they would forbid it on someone else or one nation versus another nation. 
and we would see many of these examples present in the book of Allah and in the present life that we live in. And we have to compare this to the justice of the deen of Islam because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people of Jahiliya, of ignorance, they said, وَقَالُوا هَذِهِ أَنْعَامٌ وَحَرْثٌ حِجْرٌ لَا يَطْعَمُهَا That these are uh, animals, an'am, وَحَرْث and crops, specific, and it's hijr, that means it's only for specific people to eat from it, to uh, be slaughtered for, whether it's those who are the keepers of the idols and those who take care of them and so on, or for uh, males versus females, and whether it's to uh, get the milk from it or not, not everybody can drink from it, but only specific individuals. And the like of this is mentioned in Surah Al-An'am when we discussed that before. So they invented certain uh, rules and virtues or rituals that would apply to some people and some other people, it would not apply for them. So they said, Hijrun la ta'amuha illa man nasha. Only for them, whoever they will, for them to eat from it, then it become permissible. And their examples, the details of that is mentioned, again, as we said in Surah Al-An'am. But the point here that we need to focus upon is that they invented that. They made this according to their own will. Bizamihim. This is how they thought of it. This is how they claimed. Uh, and this is definitely something so evil because, the, again, the only one that has the right to do this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنْعَامٌ حُرِّمَتْ ظُهُورُهَا Another thing is that some of these cattle, some of these animals, they would forbid the, 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 the ride of it. That means it's forbidden for people to uh, ride on it, except, you know, why? Because it's, uh, you know, specific animals like the, uh, the ham, as it's mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah, where it's forbidden for people to ride if it has specific characteristics and so on. And certain animals where they do not mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they slaughter it. And they would claim that the jinn has to do something with it or whatever there is. So they would specify who the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are to be mentioned when they slaughter. And specific animals where the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not mentioned. And this is all, as you see, this is invention. This is wrongdoing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all of these cattle and all of these animals. And the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be mentioned in all of them. But they make these specific rulings from their own invention. Iftira'an alay. That means they invented this. They claimed this. They forged this. They made it according to their own desires. And not uh, something that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayajizihim bima kanu yaftaroon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them for what they were inventing. And this is a severe warning for them and a severe warning for those who invent. And that's why when we talk about bid'ah innovations in the deen, this is what it leads the people to. When human beings, they think that they have the right to legislate for themselves to what is permissible, what is not permissible, to make for themselves and to make their own religion, this is what it leads to. It leads to all kinds of injustices and separations in classes among the people and racial divisions and all kinds of evil things that human beings would suffer a great deal because of being away from the light that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the justice of the truth that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, some people might see that certain things is not coming into their favors and others would see the opposite. The deen of Islam and the rules from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes for the benefits and what is just. And therefore, you would find this very clear. And this is an important subject for a Muslim to really reflect upon with matters of knowledge. So the verse clearly states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them as a result of what? Of their iftira, of their inventing, their forging, they're making up their own religion. They're making up their own rulings of what's permissible, what's not permissible. Not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but from their own selves with some of the details that were mentioned here. The next verse, continuing the same subject from uh, the people of false religions and the people of Jahiliyyah, verse number 139, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ma fi butuni hadhihi wa muhazzamun ala wa And they say what is in the bellies of these animals is exclusively for our males and forbidden to our females. But if it is born dead, then all of them have shares therein. He will punish them for their description. Indeed, he is wise and knowing. So again, more specifics of 
some of the things that they made up from their own inventions. So whatever in the bellies of these cattle or these animals, uh, whatever the animals are pregnant with, so they would say that it's only for, exclusively only for the males. And they would choose that based on what they like or what's good for them because they were maybe dominant, they are in charge, and it become forbidden on their females. But if it comes out dead, right, and usually this is something that is of a less uh, benefit and so on, they would say that everybody can share this. It's all invention. The same way that they were unjust towards women when they would kill the infant if it's a girl uh, because of the, what they believe of being a shameful thing and they would even relate this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and claim that these girls are the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the angels or whatever there is so they would kill them to get rid of them and this is basically how evil people can degrade themselves as a result of being away from the truth and as we mentioned that before it sounds horrible, sounds some, something very evil but believe it or not, human beings can reach that level without thinking, without seeing that this is something evil. This is how people can reach, this is how people can degrade themselves. At the time of these ignorant people, they thought that there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Why? Because this is how the shaitan would adorn the evil to people. The same thing people you would find nowadays can kill their own uh, fetuses and so on in the womb of their mothers and they would think that this is their right to do that a life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give and they would kill this life and they would think that they have the right to do so. So people usually find some justification here or there for their own actions, whether it's good, whether it's bad. And that's why the dispute will continue unless people would return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and receive guidance from the one that created them. And as a fact, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected this religion from any change or alteration for those who want to see the truth that as a fact and a principle of this religion the only one that has the right for something to be permissible something to be not permissible is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone whether it's in the Quran or in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and this is stated clearly in the Quran in more than one verse وَلَا تَقُولُ لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ that do not uh, make your, uh, your speech would explain and describe what is permissible and what's not permissible so that you would invent a lie to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not permissible. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to do so. So they invented this and uh, they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, say, jizihim waslahum, the same, they, they will be punished because of their description of things. Innahu hakimun alim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise the all-knowing subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most wise, he knows what's permissible, what's not permissible, and what's best for the people because it's based on the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and based on the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue inshallah ta'ala with more of these verses right after the break, so stay with us inshallah. <laughs> We're still in Surah Al-An'am from verses 138 to 142 and the first two or verses as we heard talks about the ways of the people of ignorance and this is all general for those who invent and make up their own religion and it's always made up unless it's the truth from the religion of Islam and even if people have some truth some of the true uh, traces from the messengers of Allah, but they add and they alter and they change. And that's why the final and comprehensive and the perfect way of life is the final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as we heard, some of these rulings that they invented, especially with the cattle and the animals and the crops and so on, making it specific for certain individuals or for males versus females and what to share and what not to share and all of these different rulings that they invented and we heard that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned against these inventions and that inventions for what the human beings can invent in this is a beautiful thing like for example inventing in matters of technology in matters of uh, things that would make their worldly matters easier or benefiting for them so when the human beings, they excel 
in the materialistic part of, of science and knowledge and so on, chemistry, physics, biology, whatever there is, inshallah they can excel by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to matters of belief, when it comes to matters of religion, what's permissible, what's not permissible, this is something that they don't have the capacity for. They would invent things that would bring all kinds of injustices. So those who have more money, they would make their own rulings to protect their own wealth. Those who have more power than others, they would make sure that they tailor their ru rules and laws and so on to protect the rights of the like of them. And this is what humanity has been suffering from all along. And therefore, the only one that has the right to legislate for the people, meaning that this is permissible and this is not permissible, and so on, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's basically the beauty of the deen of Islam, where everything should be referred and returned back to the revelation from Allah, the Qur'an and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And that's why it's mentioned in the Qur'an how they, uh, they will be punished as a result of this invention, uh, these uh, ways of inventing ways of religion, what is permissible, what's not permissible, and so on. It's mentioned throughout the entire Qur'an. And uh, this is a subject that we need to look into closely when we're reciting and reflecting upon the Qur'an. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an that in the Day of Judgment, all of this will be uh, you know, a ways of punishment for them as it's mentioned here in this verse. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who invent these ways, they will be severely punishment, punished as we heard in the Qur'an. Uh, they will be asked in the Day of al qiyamah about these inventions that they invented in matters of the religion. So definitely great benefits for each and every one of us, for us to understand the religion in the proper way, and we'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala at the end of the program. Then the next verse, again another uh, evil practice from the people of ignorance, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned also in the Quran in more than one place, as a result of the shaitan, the devil adorning the evil for them, and they would justify it for themselves and they would take it as a religion and as a way of what is permissible, what's not permissible. This is verse number 140 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in it which means those who will, those will have lost, uh, who killed their children in foolishness without knowledge and prohibited what Allah had provided for them, inventing untruth about Allah, they have gone astray and were not rightly guided. See how the verse starts with قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ قَتَلُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ They are indeed in loss. And khasira means loss, and then khusara, which is mentioned also in the Quran, that uh, the real loss is the loss in the hereafter. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَمَةِ That indeed those who are in real loss, those who would lose themselves and their families in the hereafter. This is the real loss because they cannot make up for this loss whatsoever. Any loss in this life, it can be uh, remade and so on and so forth. But in the hereafter, it's an everlasting loss. And the loss is, the real loss is when a person work hard for something and invest, say, a lot of wealth or his entire wealth in something. Imagine someone that all of his savings has been invested in a particular uh, project and all of the effort and years after years a person would invest his wealth and his health and his ability and so on. And all of that become a big loss for him. Such a huge loss. And this is what basically these uh, innovations and these innovators have uh, done to their own selves. Those who killed their own children. So someone to kill their own child, you know, someone that doesn't have that mercy whatsoever in the heart towards the children, whether they don't have it or they usually have this, but maybe they're doing it as part of a religion or a false religion that they're following. So this is the real loss where they suffered a great deal. They sacrificed great sacrifice. That's how they thought. But it was all in vain. It was all in loss. Why? Because they invented matters of the religion. 
And this is a clear evidence and a benefit for all of us that when people innovate in matters of their religion, they make it difficult for themselves. They make a loss to themselves. They do more actions and it's all in vain. They make it tight for themselves. And this is the case for those who invent, whether it's a matter of belief, they make it difficult for them to have the pure belief and the hearts become corrupted. They make it difficult for them in acts of worship when they invent certain ibadat or acts of worship that was not done at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. They make it difficult for themselves, plus it's all in vain. When a believer, for example, fasts a long, hot summer day because it's Ramadan or because it's a recommended fast, we know for sure that this is a virtuous thing. So a person is going through uh, struggling with own self, to, with hunger and thirst and so on, but this is going to be paid off more than what he even imagined and comprehend because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But we know that for sure because this is the truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. If a person goes to the salah and go early to the salah and walks to the masjid and makes sure that he prays in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he might be leaving a business that he was dealing with or his loved one or whatever busy uh, things that a person is doing, leaving all of that for the sake of Allah to go to the masjid, for example, needs sacrifice, it's struggle, but it's something that is going to be paid off a great deal from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we know for sure that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. A person likes to drink wine, for example. He's been raised to drink it and he liked the taste of it. He likes to be intoxicated. And now he knows that it's forbidden for him as a Muslim to do so. He would leave it for the sake of Allah. That requires for the person to have a lot of struggle, a lot of sacrifice. But it's all worth it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that forbade. So a person knows that for sure, he would leave it for the sake of Allah. A person is ordered to give zakah, a portion of his wealth, for an obligatory charity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to give, which is a small portion. A person would do that with his goodwill, with loving it so much because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Compare this to someone that would sacrifice for things that it's all false, that has no basis to it whatsoever. Who invented this? And that's really a sincere call also for those who follow false religions. Who are the ones that uh, making for you what is halal and what is haram? What is permissible, what's not permissible? Why what's not permissible is not permissible? Is it from your own leaders, from your own people? Where did that come from? It has to come from the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Of course, we're not talking about the things that governs the lives of the people that uh, the same also the principles of it in the deen of Islam. Like for example, the traffic laws. A person might say, well, that's not in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So who, uh, for anyone to say that you do not, read, uh, you do not uh, run a red light or this or that, you know, these are permissible things. And actually a person has to be obedient to these rules and these regulations that governs uh, some of the things or the ways of the people. So, and we have the general rulings in it in the deen of Islam in which everything is permissible for us, unless it's proven otherwise, especially with matters of transactions and dealing with people. That's why what is forbidden for the people of the truth is very limited. It's not the norm of life that everything is forbidden, as some people might think. It's the opposite. It's the people, those who invent their own ways of life, they would find their life is more tight than those who would follow the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just and he's the most wise and he's the all-knowing subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who kill their own children, they used to kill them or they still kill them for whatever religious reasons or for uh, means of provisions for them to have, all of that is evil. This is how the shaitan had uh, deceived them to make them reach this level where they would kill their own children. Safahan bi ghayri'im, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, safahan, foolishly without knowledge whatsoever. And they forbade what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for them, whether it's their children, whether it's the food that is mentioned in the previous verses, uh, inventing their own uh, sinful acts and what's permissible, what's not permissible. They did it themselves. They forbade. مَا رَزَقَهُمُ اللَّهُ What Allah for provided for them. So again, who has the right to forbid or not to forbid? It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most wise, the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they did that iftira'an ala Allah, inventing untruth about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why this is inventing untruth about Allah? 
because this is an exclusive right to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make the matter permissible, not permissible. So when people invent, they are basically stating some invention, some uh, false about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're saying basically that Allah forbade such and such when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't forbade. And, and that's why when a person says that this is haram, if a person says such and such is haram, that means he has to have the proof and evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is saying it's haram. Whether it's in the Quran or in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallam, or the principles of it is mentioned in the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet So for example, if intoxications are haram, this is, doesn't have to come with the specific names or whatever people invent of intoxications. Whether it's something that they grow or something that they can produce in a lab, it doesn't matter. And a person would say this, this drug specifically was not present at the time of the Prophet sallam, but it shares the same uh, wisdom behind why it's forbidden, which is intoxicating one's mind. So the like of that is clear in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's comprehensive, it is perfect. So uh, therefore, people when they forbade something from their own ways of thinking and so on, they, they are inventing a lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how evil that is for someone to invent a lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ ضَلُّوا وَمَا كَانُوا مُهْتَدِينَ They are indeed ضَلُّوا, led astray. And they were not guided. They were not guided because they made the, their own ways of doing things. And guidance is to follow. Guidance is not to invent your own religion. Guidance is not to make your own rulings, whether this is permissible, it's not permissible. Guidance is to follow the truth, to follow the Qur'an, to follow the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to follow the ways of the people of knowledge, those who explain to us the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The verses makes it very clear what's guidance and what's misguidance. So human beings, they can have their own definitions of what's guidance and what's misguidance. And people can make speeches of this. And they would say, these people are misguided. These people are guided based on what? If it's based on their own desire and their own intellect, this is, has no grounds to it. This is foolishness. The only way for us to know what is guided and what is not guidance is from the wahi, revelation from Allah. The Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ مَا إِنْ تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِ فَلَنْ تَضِلُّوا بَعْدِ أَبَدًا I left among you, but if you hold fast to it, you would never be led astray after me. And that is Kitab Allah wa Sunnati, the book of Allah and the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet And also the Prophet when he talked about the Quran, that whoever hold fast to it, he would never be led astray. So therefore, guidance and misguidance is according to how a person hold fast to the wahi, to the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Then after the matter been made clear and uh, condemning the ways of the disbelievers, those who would invent their own religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verse talks about his favors upon the human beings and upon the believers and mentioning some of these favors and ordering them to do the right thing and to observe the rights of others by fulfilling the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in them. Verse number 141, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَ جَنَّاتٍ مَعْرُوشَاتٍ وَغَيْرَ مَعْرُوشَاتٍ وَالنَّخْلَ وَالزَّرْعَ مُخْتَلِفًا أُكُلُهُ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَالضُمَّانَ مُتَشَابِهًا مُتَشَابِهًا وَغَيْرَ مُتَشَابِهِ كُلُوا مِنْ ثَمَرِهِ إِذَا أَثْمَرَ وَآتُوا حَقَّهُ يَوْمَ حَصَادِهِ وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Which roughly means, and he it is who causes gardens to grow, both trellised and untrellised, and palm trees and crops of different kinds of food and olives and pomegranates, similar and dissimilar, eat of each of its fruit when it yields, and give its due, the zakah, on the day of its harvest, and be not excessive. Indeed, he does not like those who commit excess. So as what's mentioned previously, mentioned with some details and specifics, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some of his favors, very specific, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is He. is the one that created and made Jannat. Jannat, which is gardens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that uh, make the Jannat and the gardens to grow. You put the seed, you use the uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but who's the one that makes it grow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Different types of gardens. We'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala and the rest of the verses and the benefits to be learned after the breaks so stay with us inshallah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah welcome back and with verse number 141 that we just heard the recitation of it and the translation of this beautiful verse after what we heard of the inventions of the people of disbelief and how they invented religions and they are led astray as a result of their own inventions and they are to follow the truth and the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the final revelation to mankind the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet this verse 141 as we heard uh, mentioning some of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the human beings and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that causes whatever grows to grow and that's by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to witness this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us to see that to witness the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the magnificent power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we see these fruits and vegetables and whatever grows in the gardens who is the one that is causing it to grow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and earth and the believers they they need to see this and this is the level of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a, a believer should be, be occupied in with one's heart, with one's eyes, with one's tongue. And that's why the life of the believers is totally different than the lives, of, the lives of the disbelievers, those who are ignorant about the Creator of the heavens and the earth. So when the verse talks about the different gardens, whether it's on the ground or has a stem or elevated, all different types of gardens, who's the one that causes it to grow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mention specifically some of the trees for people to see for their own and to see to their own hearts and to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the one that causes this to grow he's the only one that has the right to legislate for the people and to tell them which is permissible and which is not permissible so the palm trees for example amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the different types of uh, vegetations and the like of this uh, the, the olives as it's mentioned in the verse the pomegranates which is something also amazing how it looks in trees and how it's growing from a seed or a small seed that grows from the ground. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is causing it to grow. Different looks of trees, different looks of fruits. And they are given the same source of life which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the water and the, and the soil and so on. But they taste totally different. And it's all by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whether they, as it says in the ayah, mutashabihum or ghayra mutashabihum. They look similar or they don't look similar. All of that is from the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after mentioning this and having the hearts to be moved with the remembrance of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala different than what the disbelievers are doing, then the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. And this is the justice of the deen of Islam. This is the spaciousness of the truth. This is the mercy of the religion of the truth because it comes from the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala eat from its fruits when it's harvested when it's when it's ripe when it yields eat from it eat from the fruits this is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything is permissible for you unless it's proven otherwise in the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the mercy and then you see the justice of Allah eat from its fruits when it yields and give its due which is here refers to the zakah on the day of its harvest. And give its due, the right of it, to the poor in the day of harvesting. And this is the balance that we need to witness in the religion of the truth, in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you would find people are extremes when it comes to this. One extreme is that people, they grow whatever they want to grow. And they eat whatever they want and they don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no rights in their wealth towards the poor unless it's taken by force from them. They don't care about anyone. They care about their own self and their own wealth and so on. 
So this is one extreme. And the other extreme, those who would forbid for them what is permissible. And they would say this is only permissible for the males and not the females. This is only permissible for specific individuals, not for everybody, and so on. They make it difficult for themselves. They make it tight for them. And then you see the, the spaciousness, the goodness, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is the truth. That eat from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for you, which is the norm. Everything is permissible, as we said, unless it's very specific, counted things. You won't find in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ mentioning a list of all of the food that you can eat and the list of the, all of the food that you cannot eat. You would find the list of the things that you're not permissible for you to eat. Why? Because it's only counted once. And then all of the rest is permissible. And that's the rule, that's the principle. When it comes to eating and drinking, everything is permissible. Unless proven by the evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that it's not permissible. But then the justice of Allah give the rights of it, the do of it, which is nothing compared to what people would harvest. And that's why there's differences in the zakah and the do money obligation from these fruits and, and, and these vegetables that is taken uh, to be given. So not, not every specific thing that grows, of course, and with very specific rulings and specific measures, whether it's a person is working on irrigating it or it's uh, irrigated by the water from the rain and without the work of the human beings, major difference even in the percentage or the, the ratio of what's given to be given as a do of the zakah. Uh, and this is all by the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا And do not be excessive. Do not be excessive in uh, spending and doing whatever things of anything that is excess. It is not permissible. There's always a level of justice that a person should not go beyond that whether it's in food and drink and whatever, clothing a person wears, whatever there is, because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who are excess. And that leads the person to transgress when a person is living a life of excess in everything, in whatever a person do. And that's why we have to be careful not to be excess, but rather to be following the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has great deal and, and things to, for us to, re, to reflect upon. Maybe we can talk about that inshallah ta'ala in other times. But the last verse because of the time, then we can visit these meanings over and over again. Verse number 142, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ الْأَنْعَامِ حَمُوا And of the grazing livestock are carriers of burdens, and those too small, eat of what Allah has provided for you and do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. And so after mentioning the crops and uh, to eat from it lawfully, and this is a, a good thing for you by being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to give the portion, very small portion of it for the, the do, the zakah money and so on. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from the livestock, some of it can be uh, carriers of burdens. You can ride on it. You can carry things on it for the, to help you to carry things and so on. And some are small. So some are big and some are small. And this is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for different use and different benefits that you can benefit from it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kulu mimma razaqakumullah. Eat from what Allah provided for you. As it's mentioned in the previous verse. Do not make it not permissible for you as it's mentioned previously about the people of Jahiliyyah, the people of ignorance. All of these cattle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made permissible for you, it's permissible for you, it's pure for you. You mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you eat it and you uh, seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing what is permissible for you. And what's not permissible, again as we said, it's not everything, it's limited, it's counted, it's very specific and the norm of things that everything is permissible. And therefore, the verses ends with shaytan. Do not follow the footsteps of shaytan, Satan, the devil. This is basically what sums all of what's mentioned before. The ways of the people of the ignorance, the people of ignorance, the false religions, all of these deviations, they are basically following the ways of shaytan, the steps of shaytan. He's the one that led them astray by inventing in matters of the religion that led them to be even outside the fold of the truth. And all of that starts with inventing. Inventing idols, images for them to worship. Never a prophet of Allah would order the people to make a statue or an image for them to worship. They would forbid that. 
But those who would come after the prophets of Allah, they would invent their own ways of worship. What's permissible, it's not permissible in eating and drinking and the like of this. People invent their own ways, then they're making it tight for themselves and it doesn't stop there. Because it's khutuwat, it's steps of shaitan. Steps meaning that one step leads to the next step. It makes it easy to the next step and the next step till a person reaches his own uh, destiny of destruction. Indeed, the shaitan is a clear enemy. Innahu lakum mubin. Indeed, the shaitan to you is a clear enemy. And see how amazing it's mentioned that he is a clear enemy. Where that clarity comes from, we do not see the shaitan. We do not see this everlasting enemy to every single human being. And most of the human beings are led astray by the steps of the shaitan, except for those who see the clear enmity of the shaitan. Who are those people? They are the believers. They are those who see the clarity of the enmity of shaitan by reciting the wahi from Allah. Those who are attached to the book of Allah. Those who are attached to the revelation from Allah. So from the very beginning, we've been talking about the revelation from Allah, the Qur'an and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet The verses, the hadith of the Prophet that talks about holding fast to the book of Allah, the sunnah of the Prophet everything becomes very clear. It doesn't mean that you won't have any more struggle in your life, any more sacrifice in your life. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the clarity of things, the truth versus falsehood. What to follow and what not to follow. What's permissible, what's not permissible. Many people that are confused about these things. They don't see the enmity of shaitan. They think that they believe or they think or their opinion is this or they like is this. And they do not see the whispers because they don't see the shaitan. They don't consider the shaitan as an element in their life, whether to lead them astray or to be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed the shaitan is a clear enemy. His enmity is clear. He does not take a break. He does not have a peace treaty with you as, uh, as a human being. He doesn't quit whatsoever. Till the day of judgment, he's constantly in the state of enmity. And if you would take a break, or if you would have peace from your side towards this enemy that never quit whatsoever, that means this enemy will keep on attacking you. And therefore, a person has to keep on this enmity being there and being present and being aware of it so that the person is not led astray. And this is for all of us. And the only way to protect ourselves from this, whether it's in the context of knowing what is right and what is wrong and what's permissible, what's not permissible, this is by getting to know the truth in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and to listen to the people of knowledge. If it comes to our own desires and weaknesses and sins and so on, still clear enmity from the shaitan, we need to protect ourselves by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking help from him to have the strength to have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fear Allah, to be obedient to Allah, to sacrifice and to put the effort and to be patient and to put the struggle, to be away from following our desires, but rather to follow the truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet So again, it's all about the revelation from Allah. <coughs> the revelation of Allah would make us see the justice of Allah, the justice of the deen of Islam, because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's really sad that how human beings are being led astray and they deprive themselves from seeing the beauty of the deen of Islam, the justice of the deen of Islam. Why? Because of their forgetfulness, not reading the truth. And that's why we need to be patient to learn our religion, to follow the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reflect upon what we see and what we hear and to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being obedient to him. Uh, there are many benefits to be mentioned. Many great things are mentioned in the verses. Because of the time, we'll stop here and we'll continue, inshallah ta'ala, next time. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an Walau kana min indi ghayri allahi la wajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira تدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا